Hidden in the new Knives Out mystery is a ton of secret symbolism and sly details that predict the many twists and turns. yippee ki movie lovers, I'm Jan, and in this video I'm peeling back every layer of Gloss Onion to reveal all the clues you might have missed. Spoilers ahead of course, so take care. By the end of the movie, Miles has been exposed as Andy and Duke's killer, so Helen, Andy's twin sister, takes revenge by smashing up his art, setting the place on fire, and destroying one of the world's most famous paintings, the Mona Lisa. However, in a clever bit of foreshadowing, the details of this big moment were laid out much earlier, when Miles explained the type of person he considered a disruptor. If you want to shake things up, you start with something small. You break a norm or an idea. Notice how Helen was paying attention attention to Miles during his little speech, and she basically followed his script, starting with smaller pieces of glass which stares up whiskey and some of the others. Everybody gets excited because you're busting up something that everyone wanted broken in the first place. Then she moves on to bigger pieces like his Liberace piano that Miles actually begins to care about. Will you break more things, break bigger things? And then she turns to the Mona Lisa, the thing that everyone in the room begs her not to ruin. Are you willing to break the thing that nobody Nobody wants you to break. And Miles, of course, tries to stop her. They're gonna tell you to stop. Nobody wants you to break the system itself. But that is what true disruption is. Helen also mocks his gesture about crossing the line, employing it just before she actually crosses the line, truly disrupting his world and sending his empire based on fakery and lies up in smoke. We all got to that line and crossed it. Disruptors. By the way, the finale was also foreshadowed when Helen received the puzzle box intended for her sister Andy, and rather than playing along with Miles's game, she smashed it open, destroying it, but at the same time solving the box's mystery. And I think there's a nice parallel here between Helen and Marta from the first movie, who also refused to play the game by the rules. You won, not by playing the game Harlan's way. But yours. Another clever clue comes via the murder mystery game that Miles organised for the weekend. The way Miles is shot with a dart that bursts open a pouch of fake blood under his shirt telegraphs how when he shoots Helen later, she'll use Jeremy Renner's hot sauce to pretend to be dead. Another clue that Helen hadn't really died was that Blanc wouldn't let anyone go near her supposedly dead body. Shouldn't we? She's not going anywhere. And the way Miles hides the diamond he stole from Birdie in plain sight and the necklace he puts on for the evening replicates how he also hid Andy's red envelope in plain sight behind the fake napkin in his office. It also transpires that Miles didn't even come up with the mystery himself like he originally claimed, but instead hired author Gillian Flynn to write it, in a similar way to how he took credit for Andy's original business idea. And the shout out to Flynn, who's most famous for her book and screenplay of Gone Girl, could be another nod to the fact that later Helen is actually only pretending to be dead. One of the biggest clues that there was something suspicious about Miles was the look of absolute shock on his face when he saw Andy turn up on his private island, as after all, he knew he'd poisoned her just days earlier. Andy, you're here. I imagine Miles didn't know that Andy had a twin, so he must have thought she'd survived the poisoning, especially as news hadn't broken yet about her death. And I think the way he weirdly touches her shoulder after she arrives could be that he was checking to see if she was actually real and not just a figment of his imagination or a ghost. I really am glad you're here. Interestingly, Claire was perhaps the only one who sensed early on there was something odd about fake Andy. Something's off. She's changed. There's some delicious secret symbolism in the names of twin sisters Andy and Helen. Andy is short for Cassandra, who in Greek mythology had the gift of prophecy but was cursed to never be believed, and she also had a twin sibling called Helenus. And we see all this play out in the movie as Andy warned Miles that his clear hydrogen technology was dangerous and would end up causing a disaster, which comes true in the finale. Hindenburg. <laughs> Also like her Greek counterpart, nobody believed Andy in court when she sued Miles stating that she was the one who came up with the original idea for Alpha. Additionally, in the Greek myths, Cassandra predicted that the arrival of Helen of Sparta in Troy would lead to the destruction of the city, similar to how the arrival of Helen on Miles' private island eventually leads to his downfall. Like the Trojan horse which Greek myths Cassandra warned about, Helen and Blanc infiltrate Miles' abode and destroy it from within. 
And a clever little detail pointing to Andy's secret twin is the mug we see her drinking from at home, which is a two-faced head of the Roman god Janus as its design. And given that this particular god is associated with beginnings, the mug's design is doubly appropriate for Andy as she was the true originator of Alpha. Blank's undercover role was also foreshadowed when he first appears and he's in the middle of the game Among Us, playing the role of an imposter. In Among Us, one of the major objectives for imposters is to sabotage the mission, and in Glass Onion, Helen, another imposter, triumphs by destroying Miles' treasures and legacy, and fellow imposter Blanc helps her get the means to do it. By the way, Blanc accidentally gave away that fake Andy wasn't who she appeared to be when he called her Helen momentarily in the aftermath of Duke's death. Helen, did you take Duke's gun? And that's before we knew who she really was. The Amiga symbol is a recurring motif in the movie, appearing on Miles' super yacht, deck chairs on the boat, dressing gowns and the Amiga brand watch. And Miles' business empire runs under the banner Alpha. The Alpha and Amiga is one of the names used for Christ or God in the Book of Revelation and points to how Miles sees himself as a godlike figure. The two symbols are also the first and last letters in the Greek alphabet, which relates to how the movie chronicles the beginning of Miles' business empire when it was first conceived, with the idea he stole from Andy, to the end of his reign when Helen torches his world to the ground. You can also see an allusion to the beginning and end in Andy's room via a painting of an Ouroboros a snake eating its own tail. It's here where Andy discovers the original napkin with the business plan, a moment which references both the beginning and then, with the red envelope, the end both for Miles and for Andy as he kills her over it. When Helen draws up her suspect chart for who might have killed her sister, she writes Miles' name right next to the column headers for motive and opportunity, rather than on a separate line like she does for everyone else, a subtle clue that Miles is the real killer and that they've overlooked that fact. When Helen points out that the grid looks a little like a game card from Clue and comments that Blanc must be good at the game, he replies, I'm very bad at dumb things. My Achilles heel. Ticking boxes, running around, searching all the rooms. It's just a terrible, terrible game. Blanc doesn't realise yet, but it ends up that to solve the glass onion mystery, Helen in fact has to do all those things. Tick boxes and run around searching the rooms on the island until she finds the hidden red envelope. As Blanc points out, dumb, simple mysteries are his Achilles heel, and so he dismisses the most obvious suspect when Helen suggests it. Miles Brown is not an idiot. To risk committing murder after a very public court case, with the possibility of that email of Andy's coming to light, would be an exceedingly stupid thing to do. And another hint that the answer to the mystery will be a simple one comes when Blanc comments to Miles, I like the glass onion as a metaphor. An object that seems densely layered, but in reality the center is in plain sight. There's another clue to where the evidence for Andy's murder is hiding right at the beginning of the movie. When Duke receives the puzzle box and his mother tells him, That first one's a Fibonacci sequence. Of course, the Fibonacci spiral in the box is very similar to the one at the center of Miles' office, behind which the red envelope is hidden. Now this one might be a little stretch, but I think that, as well as being necessary to the puzzle itself, the missing square in the end of the puzzle box with its red background is also a hint to the see-through glass or hole in the Fibonacci spiral and the red envelope behind that. Interestingly, the giant chandelier above Miles' dining table with little red squares in among the white lights could be a nod to the red envelope and to his clear hydrogen rock. Another of the puzzles has a cheeky hint to Miles' idiocy. The chessboard layout and checkmate move that Claire makes to unlock the next level is called the Fool's Mate, and is the quickest and most foolish way a player can lose in chess. It requires that the player going first make the worst possible opening two moves, a clue to how Miles gives himself away to Blanc in the most obvious manner. It hides not behind complexity, but behind mind-numbing 
obvious clarity. It doesn't hide at all. And I was staring right at it. After Duke discovers the truth about Andy's death and makes the deal with Miles to get himself on Alpha News, notice how he deliberately hides his phone from Birdie when she wants to see what's going on. And there was a little clue that there was something happening in the rest of the world, when Claire's husband called her a few moments earlier, presumably to tell her about Andy, but she decided to ignore his call. There's a little hint to Miles' penchant for killing his enemies via spiked beverages when he says to Blanc, I apologize, I don't know your drink, but, you know, pick your poison. After Duke dies, his phone keeps pinging, so Blanc goes to look for it. Where's Duke's phone? It just dinged, it yes. must be here. Miles backs off nervously at this point, not because he's scared of being murdered as he claims, but because he's already stolen the phone to stop anyone discovering the breaking news about Andy's death. And if you stop and look really closely here, you can spot a phone poking out of his back pocket. This has to be Duke's, as we already know that the billionaire doesn't use a phone himself and instead has fax machines sending messages. If, unlike Birdie, you are allowed on your phone, then thanks to this video sponsor NordVPN you can avoid getting into trouble whenever you're online. Nord's new threat protection feature blocks spyware, trackers and malware, so if you accidentally click on a dodgy link, Nord will block and delete any malicious downloads immediately, keeping you safe and secure. On top of that, Nord encrypts your internet connection and conceals your IP address, so you can keep all your online activity private. It stops your internet service provider from knowing what websites you visit, and Nord's threat protection will also block those third-party cookies that follow you around the web, bombarding you with incredibly intrusive ads. With Nord, you can connect up to six devices at any one time, so you can protect all your phones, laptops, and computers. And for a limited time, all our viewers can grab an exclusive offer on a two-year plan with a huge discount, plus four bonus months completely free. Just visit nordvpn.com flicks, or go to the link in the the video description to get the offer, or use coupon code FLIX when you check out. My next video will be all the easter eggs you missed in Glass Onion, which I'll link to here as soon as it's ready. So how do you think the sequel compares to the first Knives Out, and did you spot any other interesting details or clues? Let me know in the comments below. Tap here for my next Knives Out video, and if you enjoyed this one, do leave a thumbs up, I really appreciate it. Thanks for enjoying Glass Onion with me, and hope you have a marvellous movie-loving week. yippee ki movie lovers!